Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Teresa, this is Lost My Thread, and today I'm gonna to be talking about my personal top makes from 2021. Now this is a particularly fun video for me because I actually made this video last year from my makes from 2020, but at that time I was a much smaller channel, I didn't have as much experience with making videos, and so now I feel like I can build on what I've done last year. I will put a link to last year's video in the description box at the end of this video because I really enjoyed watching back about what I'd made in 2020 and what my top makes were at that time, so if you want to check those out please do, I think it was a fun video. But today it's all about 2021. So I know there is the Instagram top nine, which a lot of people participate in picking out what are their most liked posts on Instagram. I do do that because I think it's kind of fun just to see what they are, but I don't take very much from it. What I have learned from being on Instagram for a while is that for me at least, most of my liked makes are really just the makes that had a good hashtag or a popular hashtag so more people saw them, which is what gave them more likes. And, you know, a hashtag being popular it doesn't necessarily mean that a garment is better. And I don't take that as those are my best garments. And so last year I wanted to put together a video thinking about what were the things that I liked the best. But also it's not just about what is the best, it's about what do I actually wear the most? What were things that I learned throughout the year? What are the things that I'm proudest of, which aren't necessarily the things that are my personal favorites? So I'm gonna be going through a number of categories today and picking out my top makes in each of the categories. And I will start with what was my most liked post, so my number one top post on Instagram last year, which is a funny one to me and it's not one that I would have necessarily picked. Again, it's all about the hashtag. This was in the frugal frocks challenge, which is what made it very seen. I think I had some good photos as well, and it is a really fun dress. And that is this one. Not a lot to look at, just as it is. It's basically just a big rectangle of fabric that's folded over and a neck hole cut out. You do add some shaping around like a seam that goes to create a sleeve slash side of the dress combo and a waist tie that goes around it as well. This was the no zero waist dress number one from Schnitchen Patterns. If you watched my videos about frugal frocks or saw my Instagram post, you might know that the zero waist part I find a little bit comical. So this was a free dress pattern and it was supposed to be zero waist so I didn't waste any of the fabric. The neck hole that I cut out actually created a little pocket on here, which you can barely see on this fabric. This is a really lovely linen fabric that I got from Salvage and Bolts. It's such a fun fabric that I would not normally pick for myself, but I really loved wearing it. But the whole feel of this dress, it feels very 70s to me. It is definitely a retro vibe. It's not something that I would wear every day. The sleeves kind of hanging as they do, they're not the most practical thing in the world, but it's so super, super fun. It's really nice to wear on a hot day and I actually wore it more than I expected. I will say we didn't have a very warm summer in the UK last year. If we had, I think I would have worn it a bit more. It's a fun one just to go for a walk in and yeah, I will say that it feels very stylish as I'm wearing it. So it was a fun one and I see why people liked it. The next category that I think it's fun to look at was my quickest make. So some things you make take ages and some of them you just zip them together and it's like you barely started and they're finished. And the one that I think has to be the quickest one for me, partly because I made the pattern multiple times, is the Toaster Sweater 2 by Soho 7, particularly in this apricot interlock fabric. This fabric is so dreamy. This is cotton interlock fabric that I got from Guthrie and Ghani. I feel like this is one that the more I've washed it and worn it, it hasn't really worn out. It's just gotten nicer and cozier to wear. But this fabric has a really great marled look to it. It's super, super comfortable. It's got this really nice neckline that sits just nice and cozy against the neck. So this version that I'm showing you here is one that I made for myself because I did make one for myself. And then my mom complimented me on it, liked it so much that I made one for her for her birthday as well. So I have a picture of the two of us both wearing our toaster sweaters. But by the time I made hers, because this was my second for myself, by the time I made hers, it was such a quick project, I just kind of whizzed through it. So it's definitely the fastest make of the year. And just a really fun one and nice to know that she's got that lovely cozy sweater as much as I've got one too. 
The next category is my slowest make, so what took the most time from start to finish. And it was a knitting make, no big surprises. Knitting is always going to take a bit longer than sewing. I don't have the actual socks that I knitted with me, but I can show you another pair because I made a second version of this sock. It is the I'm So Basic sock by Summer Lee Knitting Company. And the first pair that I made was the one that took the longest, but I actually gave them away to my friend Annette because they're just a bit too small for me to be comfortable. I'll put up some pictures because they are super cute. I love the colors. They are really, really nicely made overall. Yeah, there's some imperfections. I don't really mind though. I'm still a beginner knitter and I really enjoyed it. They are a really cool pair of socks, but because it was my first time making them, there was a lot of stopping and starting over and getting a bit confused with the instructions. They definitely took the longest this year to make, but they were so satisfying and I'm really glad that I was able to give them to someone else who can actually wear them and feel comfortable in them and they're still going to get some love. The next category, this is actually a new category that I added in this year that wasn't in my last year's video, but I thought it was a really nice one to focus on for me and my personal sewing development. And it was which garment had the best finish. So what had the nicest finishing details? I have been trying to slowly here and there work on making the insides look as beautiful as the outsides. Sometimes I go for it more than others. A lot of times it's gonna depend on what I feel up to, what my energy levels are like, how much I really feel like it matters on that particular garment. And one that I did want to make a effort for, an effort for, was the Pona Jacket by Helen's Closet Patterns. Now the Pona Jacket, it is unlined, so because it's unlined, I felt like I needed to have it neat on the inside, so it was going to still look nice. And I used this bias binding all around the insides, so I used it on the facing, I used it on the inside of the shoulder seam, I even used it on the inside of the pockets there. I really love the way that looks overall and I feel like it created such a beautiful unique garment that is as beautiful on the inside as it is on the outside. I am so proud of the way that one came out and I feel like that's something where if you are going to get a magnifying glass, deeply inspect any of the clothes that I made to see if they are as good as they look from a distance that's the one I probably want you to look at because I am so happy with how that one looks in all the little details and particularly how it's finished. The next category I wanted to look at is what is my proudest make of the year and I'm going to have to give it to two because they basically come as a set. You can't really think about one without the other, at least I can't, and they were the bathing suits that I made. So these are my first ever bathing suits. They are the Jolly 3350 bathing suit. They were incredibly fun to make. I never thought I would make my own bathing suit before. It was not something that I had like a, a goal that I wanted to make, but I was really struggling to find a bathing suit that fit me, that I liked the style of, that I liked the fabric of, and these were just so much fun. So they were incredibly fun to make, and they were super fun to wear, and I loved the photo shoot that we did. I think this is probably my favorite photo shoot. It's not a category, but I mean, look, it was definitely a really fun photo shoot. I took pictures of these in my parents' backyard when we went back home to Chicago in the summer. My parents' backyard is the perfect scenery for this kind of photo shoot. They've got a swimming pool, my dad's got a hammock, a tiki bar, he loves his little tiki drinks as well, so being able to pose around with the props in my parents' yard was the ideal location to take pictures in these bathing suits but they were just such a fun thing to be able to make and wear it's definitely the thing that I felt like I went the most out of my comfort zone and I'm so proud of I just couldn't believe how well both of these came out it was a really really fun project and if you're gonna look at what you're the most proud of there's also gonna be what you're the least proud of or basically my least successful make of the year so the thing that I found to be the least successful for me was this t-shirt this is the Love Notions Classic Tee in a really lovely, slubby, viscose jersey fabric that I got from Vogue Fabrics. Basically, this one was my least successful because I'm just not going to wear it. I was really unhappy with the fit. I didn't feel like the proportions of the shirt made any sense on me. Even if I was to make adjustments, there's just too much wrong for me to make it work. So instead, I'm planning to cut it up and make another top out of it, including some of the scraps that I had left over from when I made it the first time. I'm sure I will get something wearable out of it, but it's basically just going to be completely starting afresh rather than adapting and adjusting it. So for me, that's definitely the least successful thing that I've made this year. 
And as much fun as it is to make all these things, it's all about wearing them. So I did have to think about what was my most worn item of the year. There were a couple of things that I was a bit debating between and I had a chat with my husband. I feel like he sees me all the time. He knows very accurately what I'm actually reaching for and wearing. And he had no, no contest in his mind and as far as he's concerned. And I think I agree, my most worn garment of the year has got to be my first toaster sweater. So this is in a maroon, it's called Cozy Colors fabric. It's a nice fleece back. I would say more like a medium weight sweatshirting fabric. It's not super toasty warm, but it is really nice and cozy. Fleece back on the inside. And I love the fabric. I love the style of this and it is definitely, it lives up to its name. It is toasty, it is so cozy. Because it's a little bit oversized, it's great to just throw over anything. And I know that I've worn this a ton this last year. I've worn it a lot just going out, I've worn it just at home. So I think it is my most worn make of 2021. And then one category that I think is a fun one to think about is what was my most surprising make. And you can look at that in a load of different ways. So it can be a good surprise, it can be a bad surprise. But I wanted to think about what really surprised me the most, either the process or once it was done. And the one that I have to say was the most surprising was my Concord tee by Cashmerette. So this is a t-shirt pattern that I made towards the end of last year. Got these really cute sleeve details with the little turned up section with a, it's like a little faux turn up with a button on there, which I think is a super cute detail. But the main thing that surprised me about this one, and this is in a beautiful bamboo jersey that I got from Blackbird Fabrics, had to remember where I got it. But that t-shirt surprised me so much in the fit, mainly because I've made t-shirts, I've bought t-shirts for years but I've never found one that fit me as well as that one did across the high and the full bust. What I had, I basically felt like, I guess this is what a t-shirt should be like. And then when I put that on, I put it on and instantly felt like, no, this is actually what a t-shirt should be like. This actually hugs me in all the right places. And it is so comfortable. I love the style of it. I love just the fit of it, the amount of ease that they've got in it in different areas. It is definitely my new go-to t-shirt pattern and I'm planning to make many more versions of it, but the first time you make it is always going to be the most exciting and that was definitely a big, very pleasant surprise for me. And because I like to sew a lot for other people, I think it's nice to think about what was my favorite hand-sewn gift this year. There are quite a few things that I made that I really liked and it's hard to pick a favorite, but I think the one that I am going to say that I liked the most was the popcorn bag that I made for my best friend back home in the US. So a popcorn bag is a fabric bag made of cotton with cotton thread that you can make a bag out of that goes into the microwave to make microwave popcorn. So it's reusable and it's also just really cute. I have loved using my own popcorn bag that I made and so knowing that I gave one to my friend and she's going to get to use it made me really happy. But the main thing is the fabric that I picked for hers. So I got this fabric from So Scrumptious. It's a beautiful quilting weight cotton, very vintagey looking for sure. It's also just really kind of trippy and spacey and dreamy in a really nice way. The inside is also lined with this really beautiful polka dot fabric that I feel like plays really well against the main fabric on the outside. I feel like it was a really nice gift overall because in addition to giving her the popcorn bag, we also gave her a DVD and some popcorn seasoning. So it was like a nice night um, movie night at home gift rather than just the popcorn bag in and of itself. But the bag I will say is something that I really, really loved and I love making my using my own, but hers is just that next level because of the fabric and it is definitely my favorite gift that I gave this year. And I also wanted to pick just my overall favorite garment of the year, which is not an easy thing to pick. There's a lot of things that I've made that I loved, but there is one that just really stood out to me as something that is just my most kind of show-stopping, unique piece. I got a ton of compliments on it when I was wearing it, but I just feel so wonderful in it. I feel really proud of it, and I feel like it was the perfect pairing of fabric and pattern together. It is my Patty Pocket skirt. So this skirt is made in Ankara African wax print fabric. It's a 
incredibly vibrant, gorgeous fabric. I absolutely love it. But this skirt has these wonderful, ginormous pockets built into it, so it's really fun and practical. It's massive at the bottom, so I really swoosh around in it. Super comfortable. I feel like it pairs together with a lot of different styles as well. I think it can look quite different depending on what I pair it with. And I really, truly do love this skirt. It is definitely the favorite thing that I've made of the year. It is one of my favorite things that I've ever made. And I'm really hoping that I'll be able to wear that one for years and years to come. Now, because it is just so, so hard to pick a favorite, I feel like I need to give honorable mention to the dress that I'm wearing now as a very high contender, very just under that skirt as my favorite garment of the year. So this is a very close number two favorite garment of the year. And this is the Mayfair dress by Nina Lee Patterns. The most incredible thing about this dress is the fabric. It is made in a really beautiful double brushed poly fabric that I got from Melanated Fabrics. It is this glorious blue, it's like a dark blue with these lovely subtle pink flowers on it, so delicate so dainty it's a gorgeous maxi length dress i love the style of it i feel so beautiful in it it's one of those things that you know when you put it on you just feel wonderful i always feel wonderful when i'm wearing this dress so it's definitely up there as a big big favorite and one that i know i'll be wearing a lot i've been wearing it already quite a lot and i only made it relatively recently so i think this is going to be another all-time favorite going forward if you've been following along on my sewing journey, hopefully you will spot some things that you recognize that I've talked about in previous videos. If any of those were your favorites too, let me know in the comments down below. If there was anything else that really stood out to you from the last year from my sewing, let me know that as well because I think it's always interesting to just get a different perspective. You know, you wear things, you make things, you have your own personal journey built into them and I think that can really influence your view of something on the other side. I would also love to hear any details of your own makes in these categories. I will put all of this down in the description box, box down below because I'm not sure if I missed out on some of the pattern titles, where I got the fabrics, all that kind of stuff. So that will all be down in the description box. I really hope you enjoyed hearing about my top makes. If you did, please do give me a thumbs up so that I know you liked it and other people out there might be able to find the video as well. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do think about subscribing if you want to see more of my makes in the coming year. And I hope to see all of you very soon. Bye!